Got him? Oh, I got him, Bob. What wow. is going on, man? These things are giant. <laughs> hey, glad you could join us. Today I'm with guide Frank Clark from Sudbury. We met how many years ago? I believe we met in 93. 93. And uh, fished together in 93 and then did another show in 94. Today, we're up here in the Algoma District, staying at Laurentian Lodge, just north of the city of Elliott Lake, and we're fishing a bass lake, having some fun. Yesterday, we caught a bunch of lake trout and smallmouth bass, yep. and today we decided to do nothing but crankbaiting with lipless crankbaits for early season smallmouth. And season up here opens at uh, what, north of Highway 17? In zone 10, it's open year round. Year round. Year round in zone 10 for both smallmouth and largemouth, so. Well, I'm looking forward to it. We, uh, we got some cranking yesterday, and today we changed lakes, and we thought we'd crank a few more. Let's see how we make out. Should get some big ones. All right. Let's give it a go. Coming up. On this week's episode, Bob heads to Ontario's Algoma region, north of Elliott Lake, to fish with tournament angler and fishing guide Frank Clark. Staying at Laurentian Lodge provides access to a variety of bodies of water in the area. On this outing, Frank takes Bob to a nearby lake for trophy smallmouth bass action. Drive in, train in, or fly in, the Algoma region is truly an angler's paradise. Wow. Here we go. That is a fish of a lifetime right there. Wow, we that thing is a monster! They fight hard, don't they? Look at that magnificent fish. Look <laughs> at the size of that fish. There he is again. The color is incredible. Oh, there we go. The Real Fishing Show with Bob Izumi. Big old Great Lakes smallmouth. That is a big rainbow trout, Chris. Nice double header. Whoa! <laughs> nice jump. Yeah. All right. That is a monster <laughs> smallmouth. Man, that is so cool. Another one, there we go. The biggest pike I've ever caught. Look hey, at that chunk. So that's what we're talking about. Real fishing is sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water, and Tim Hortons. On the Real Fishing Show, we make catching fish like this a possibility. Hey, nice. Andy, that's a nice one. That is a nice one. You know, I'll tell you what, fish, you're Bob. a professional. Well, thank you, Bob. <laughs> so, we're cruising down the shore throwing crankbaits, and I'm with Frank Clark, and uh, oh yeah, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. And uh, we see a bass cruising up shallow along the shore, and he picks up that power tube and smokes it. Look at there. Right on. That's a nice one. Look at that. Nice and that's a common size bass. That's what we're talking about right there. <laughs> but there are a lot of fish like this in the Elliott Lake area, that's for sure. Very cool. The Algoma District, I think a trout. Nice fish. All right. Slip that back in the water. Very cool. Yeah. Old fish too. Important to release these bigger fish. Very nice fish. Good stuff. Thank you. You're good, man. You well, it's your uh, trolling motor skills that uh, really wow. got me onto that fish. It's a good thing you spotted that fish, too, and, and <laughs> was able to throw to it. <laughs> I saw it cruising down the shore, but I'm not going to tell anybody. <laughs> oh, there we go. Whoa. Right on. Oh, that's a nice one. <laughs> All right, very cool. Look at that. Crankbait bass. Crankbait. Oh. oh, you got one too. That'd be a double bob. All right. That's... Here, let's let's dip them both, okay? Here we go. Here we go. This this is this is how you do her. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> we're talking. Uh. <laughs> we're talking lots of lots of fish here. Mine's just a little bigger than yours. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I don't know what kind of prescription deal you've got, uh, but you gotta you gotta get those glasses jacked. <laughs> right on. Still fun. Yeah, absolutely. Be careful. Yes, these hooks are super sharp. Yeah, I haven't been hooked yet this year but there is always a first for everything. I've been hooked many times over the years. Yourself? Uh, once where it dug in and you don't want to go there. Yeah, 
<laughs> pair of bookends. Thank you, fish. Very nice. Very nice. Monster Smallies with Frank Clark when we return. Stay tuned. That is so nice. Oh my, grab that fish. Let's take a look down under with this week's Fish Eye View, sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water. Far and away, docks are the hottest ticket for guaranteed action on any lake. For that reason, we spend a great deal of time exploring these structures with an underwater camera. Here are a few of our findings. First off, some docks are more productive than others. The high off the water suspended types are noticeably less productive than low lying ones. It's that overhead shade and cover that's important. For this reason, floating docks attract larger numbers of fish. Another important fact, the wider a dock is, the greater the chance it's home to something special. That's also true of complex structures that form different shapes. Add watercraft to the equation and you improve on a good thing. When fishing docks, start with the shady side. If there's any wave action, always work the windward side first. On pressured lakes, expect to run into fish that refuse to venture into the light. With suspended docks, you can skip bait under or get down low and right in their faces. Of course, these are things you can't do with a floating variety. If it's your dock, you could try something crazy like this. It certainly does work, but then what do you do? A better plan is to wait until the sun casts a large shadow into open water. Then present bait into this comfort zone. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, is it a good one? It's pretty good. Oh, that's huge. That's huge. It's is that a good. bass? That's a small boat. No, look at the oh. size of that thing. Whoa. Not hit out in deep water. Wow, hold on a second. Coming up. Okay. And look at that. Oh, it's barely hooked. Oh, look at the size of that thing. <laughs> that is a oh, nice Oh my, <laughs> grab that fish. That's a monster! You hit that lipless seeker. It's a Seville action first uh, that crankbait. That is a tank. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> Told we, you there were big ones, Bob. Awesome! That thing is Look huge. at the size of that. Look at the belly. You just get the So neck. I was just cranking that crankbait ever so slow. I almost stopped it and I just felt a little tick. Wow. And then bam, the rod just loaded up. Well, and we that... gotta get pictures and weigh that. That is a monster smallmouth right there. Right on. Wow, good stuff. Very Thank cool. You, hey, well, you're the guide. There you go. Oh. 513. So imagine what a seven looks like, Bob. Oh, come on. All, All right. right. What a Get beauty. This, that is. That thing is a giant. Tanker. And I love the way it hit. All right. I absolutely love that. Look at that. Good stuff, man. Thank you, Bob. Wow, thank you. Well, I, uh, I love fishing up here. And the fact that, you know, you guide up here in the Elliott Lake region, Sudbury region, yeah. all through this area, there's what, hundreds of lakes, right? It's sometimes a problem what lake you're gonna fish amazing. on any given day. Amazing. And then to catch fish like that is just amazing. Let's get at it, that's it's cool. Amazing. It's just amazing. Amazing. We said amazing a lot. In the bass tournaments that we fish, it's mandatory that you wear your personal flotation devices when you're moving from spot to spot with your uh, main motor. Frank's just moving us out to a shoal here that's connected to uh, the point and you got a bit of a saddle. Moving around like this, you don't even really know you're wearing these and uh, these are Stern's inflatable personal flotation devices. We're just wearing them all day, especially in this cold water. If you fall in, you could get hypothermia up sooner than you think. There we go. There. Wow. Whoa. I stopped the uh, this flat shad for a second, paused yep. it, and oh man, wow. and this thing came up and just hammered it. Does look like a nice one. Whoa. 
Yeah, look at how short and fat that fish is. <laughs> wow. Awesome. Very nice. So that's that Sabeel, Flat different shot. color, yeah. different coloration than what I'm throwing. Almost. They're strong, aren't they? Wow. Almost like a like a tilapia or, or bluegill color. And uh, I don't think it was coming off. No. What do you think? I'm Not too shabby? Yeah, I'm thinking that's pretty nice. I think, yeah, four and a half. Congratulations, you're on the board. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Frank Clark, what's your guiding service? The guiding I like to do is instructional guiding. So teaching people how to uh, catch fish like that, Bob. Gosh, I That's the you. name of the game. Well, you haven't been teaching me. I've been doing all my own stuff, but uh, <laughs> I appreciate you bringing me here, though. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> what I'm learning is there's some big bass up here in the Elliott Lake region of Ontario. Very cool. Very good. Let's do it again. You said we'd get one off this point. Yeah. <laughs> When we return, <laughs> awesome laughing? fishing action in the Algoma All region. Right. Stay tuned. That is awesome. Belly. This tip of the week is sponsored by Coleman, the outdoor company. You may not spend as much time on the water and in a boat as I do, but you certainly want to look after your investment. And I'm talking about lower units today. It's so easy to change your lower unit oil. Now, because I fish tournaments and I do some pretty crazy long trip runs on the Great Lakes, sometimes as much as 250 miles round trip, I personally change the lower unit oil on my boats every 50 hours. Now, they recommend at least once a season or every 100 hours, but because I run hard in tournament conditions, I like to change it every 50 hours. It's preventative maintenance. Now I use a Mystic JT4 Premium High Performance Lower Unit Gear Oil. It contains a proprietary EP additive system to protect against wear, rust, corrosion, and deposits. Now let me show you how easy it is. First of all, I've got the right tools here, and you'll need to uh, first off take out the plug down below here, okay? So I had to remove the prop on this Verado, and what you wanna do is take this plug off first. Now this one on top, okay. And as soon as you pull that off, the oil is gonna come out. We'll wait for say 10 or 20 minutes and let all of that oil get out of there. And if there's even a drip of water or two in there, a couple of drops of water, it'll make it almost like coffee colored with cream in it. And it'll be like a brown color. That means you should go see your outboard motor mechanic and, and make sure that all the seals are good because you could have a problem. But as you can see, this oil, it's got about 50 hours on it. So let's just wait till it drains. Okay, now that it's gushing out of the top, I know all the air is out. And what you want to do is replace your top plug first. I've got that plug in just tight enough. I'll tighten it up later. Now I'm going to unscrew that. And I want to quickly put this in. And you know, it really, doesn't take long to do this and it's just great preventative maintenance for your outboard engine and once I get both of these plugs tightened up what I'll do is I'll clean up all this uh, oil here I'll put the prop back and you know there's really another thing that you should look at too the top portion of this big Verado engine you want to make sure that you change your oil at least every 50 to 100 hours or once a year what I'd recommend is using a good quality oil, and this is a Mystic JT4 four cycle marine engine oil. And personally, I like the full synthetic oil because it's gonna last longer, won't break down as easy, and it's formulated to meet the warranty requirements of all the major marine motor manufacturers. And uh, what can I say? Proper maintenance will give you a much better time out there enjoying what we all love to do, and that's more fishing. There's a fish. All right. Man, that was a long cast. Long cast. Out. Oh, oh a that's nice a, one. that's got to be a nice one. It's a nice one. Okay. Yeah, he did hit on a really long cast. Oh, that's, that's a big one again. Look at it. What is going <laughs> on, man? These things are giants. <laughs> Look at hit it. Hit that Seville crankbait, Bob. This uh, lipless crankbait rod is doing its 
Yeah, that's thing actually too. the new Berkeley Emotion rod, and it's a very soft action. That one's designed for lipless crankbaits. How's it work? Well, it's it's catching them. Oh yeah. I got my uh, okay. My thumb on the spool. Oh, here there. it comes. Oh wow! Oh my! Look at this thing. What? what? <laughs> That looks like another close to six. Look, look at that. <laughs> look at that. Wow. That's got to be oh, over that's, six. That's, that might look a little bigger than look the, at uh, that. the last guy. Here, let me just grab. Look at that crankbait right at the back. Okay. No harm done to that fish. Look at that thing. Grab him. Watch, he's going to wiggle. Wow. Oh, they're strong. <laughs> All right, that is awesome. Look at the belly. Oh man, well we gotta get a weight on that. We yes. gotta get a few photos. Wow. All right. Six plus pounder. <laughs> I love it, Bob. I love it. Nice. That thing is a horse. <sighs> Bit of marking on it. I wonder how old that fish would be. One thing I want to say is it's important to release these big fish. I mean, you wouldn't want to eat a big bass like that. I mean, that fish could be 15, 20 year old fish, right? Yes, it is very important to let these fish go back and let them spawn. And you catch the same fish over and over again in a lot of these lakes up oh, here in the sure. Algoma region there too, don't you? Look at that. Actually, there's one bass, he's got one eye. Yeah. If you cast to his good side, you'll get him. You know, I believe everything you say because you're a fishing guy. <laughs> Laurentian Lodge is a fisherman's paradise. When we return, stay tuned. There's a fish. I'm telling you, Frank, you got this dialed in. That's a little guy little there. Guy. You know, one of the things, Frank, about this early season bass fishing is you really just want to cover water, don't you? That's right. We're just moving down the shoreline, working these baits. We're not getting really hung up on any one spot and just uh, cover water. Yep. Cover water till you find a big old aggressive early season bass that's moved up out of this colder water. And that fish hit that little, they like that sort of red crawdad pattern you've got, that's for sure. I would have said that color was just not a color of choice for me, but after seeing how it's working for you, I might have to look for one. Too bad you only have one, Bob. <laughs> On today's adventure, Frank Clark and I are staying at Laurentian Lodge, which is 25 minutes north of Elliott Lake in the Algoma District of Northern Ontario. Doug and Melanie Seal have worked very hard over the years building and operating Laurentian Lodge to what it is today. They offer a wide variety of luxury accommodations. I've always been impressed with how clean this place is. And it's this attention to detail that makes it an awesome place to stay. But the more than 4,000 lakes surrounding the lodge really make this an angler's paradise. Today, Frank and I decided to hit one of the many lakes for trophy smallmouth bass. The area north of Highway 17 is open all year for bass fishing, giving anglers a unique opportunity. Oh, there's a fish. You got him? I got him. Okay, I'll hold you in the it's wind. A, it's not a tanker. No? Not a tanker. Still a nice one. What's a nice one? I'm going to say it's looking two in a bit. Oh, well, maybe, yeah. maybe a little bigger than that. You hold it in the wind. Flip him. There you go. There you go. I'll grab the troll motor. Okay, you want me to pull down? No, I'm good, I'll grab the troll motor. Okay. Look at that, that's a fatty. Oh, the sun is gonna come out, Bob. Now this is called pretty extreme wind right now. Piling, it's gotta be about 20, 20 mile an hour. And we're in a pretty small protected area here really while we're exposed to the wind though get the hook out yeah it's just right in a thick bone so you, what you're saying is you had them hooked very well there's no losing this fish no good all. stuff beautiful 
Nice, healthy. Get him back in the water. Northern Ontario fatty. Oh, there we go. Okay, feels like a good one, but they all do on a long cast, you know? They always do on a long cast, so let's see. Let's see. Is he big? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that's a nice one. <laughs> it's big. It's big. That's a nice one. <laughs> I will get the net. It's a big boy. Wow. What? A, oh, here he comes. Oh. Whoa. Oh, is that ever nice? Nice. Oh, look at that. Nice one. Just put the power poles down if you don't mind. Sure thing. Look at that. That's a big boy. That thing. Wow. Whoa. That's five plus. Easy right there. And uh, get this uh, flat shad out of his mouth. Look at that. Wow. Poles are down, Bob. Whoa, is that ever a nice one? <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Right on. Very cool. You know, that's just got some weight to it. And you know, you catch so many decent smallmouths up here. All right, well, let's get it back in the water. That is a nice smallmouth bob. Very nice. See no you later. problems uh, releasing that fish. See you later, later, big buddy. Down she goes. All right. Right on. Good Congratulations. Stuff. What? I You're caught on a the fish? Board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> this is a big fish. That is a fish of a lifetime. <laughs> well, that is just amazing. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> that was too cool. Oh, man, what a fish. Look at that.